Hello, uh, my name is uh, Mary Beth Laviolette, and um, I wanted to um, introduce you to Inez Burstens. Um, Inez is uh, based in Calgary. She spent quite a number of years in Banff. Um, she is a fiber artist um, who was very active in the 70s and 80s. And uh, we're going to now uh, just talk about her time as a uh, as an artist. Thank you, Ines. Thank you. Nice to see you and nice to be here. Nice to see you too, Ines. Um, Ines, the first thing that I have on your screen um, is, uh, looks like you're working on a tapestry named Gabriel, and it was made in 1976. And what I understand is your beginnings as a fiber artist started in Vancouver. What, what got you into the field? Uh, I, I had always been interested in textiles and jewelry, the traditional Latvian ones. And for some reason, I, I think I just found some, some course, night course, and started to learn to weave and also to make, to do silversmithing. And I was so excited that that took over. Okay. And so uh, I went to all kinds of night courses and adult ed type courses because there was no kind of full full course the way we've had here at ACA and uh, I just got really interested and liked it and and that particular tapestry i had been at it for about three years in terms of weaving but I also had a gallery an art gallery in in Mission uh, in the Fraser Valley oddly enough I now live in Mission in Calgary um, however uh, and I also had a studio there. And so that was the first commission. That was the first big commission that somebody wanted. And the, the image of, a, of the angel Gabriel is what this person wanted. I designed it, but he wanted something like that. And okay. so that was doing right. completely traditional uh, tapestry weaving. All right. Now let's look at the next image. Um, Roots, 1978. Uh, quite a bit different uh, what you're doing here. And I also know in 1978, that was the year that you went to uh, the BAMP Center. Um, how did the BAMP Center come into your world? Well, I had that, taken what weaving I could find as far as I could in Vancouver and the Fraser Valley. I was part of the, I was a member of the uh, Vancouver Weavers Guild. I was a president of the Mission v Weavers Guild. And then I met a friend who had been to Bath and recommended it. So I found the courses and applied. I applied to two of them that summer. One was the sculptural weaving, which is actually the background for the piece that's in the show and the background perhaps of the roots section of this. And the other one was an art in architecture with Mariette. And so that was the more gridded form at the back, the woven form. And so combining the two uh, ended up the result of that summer. All right. Now, um, Mariette um, was at the BAMP Center um, teaching, um, uh, you know, weaving for architectural settings. Um, what, what do you remember about her? Well, everything. <laughs> she was a <laughs> tremendous, wonderful person. She started the whole interchange idea, the whole moving uh, BAMP towards the more artistic uh, expression in weaving but not abandoning the regular weaving. There were plenty of sessions that were uh, technical to some degree, but really advanced technical. There were no, no beginner type courses there. And uh, she was very inspirational. Um, when, she, when I ended up being her assistant head, uh, she was in Montreal, I was in Banff, and, and she was only coming because she was too busy with the rest of her life. She wasn't like some of the other studio heads who lived there. Uh, she lived in Montreal and came once a month. In the meantime, I had to basically, with assistance, look after it. And then towards the end, she only came once every two months for about five days. And so at that time, we'd make all our agreements and make all the decisions and then carry on while she was gone. And okay. she, was, she, was a, she was a tremendous politician, very, very persuasive. All right. Let's look at um, something that I think has something to do with her. Um, interchange 2, 
1979. Now that was the first year for fiber interchange. Um, what was what was what what was good about that? What what got got you involved with it? Fiber interchange was an amazing program, and and Banff at that time also had a lot of money, and so most of the people who went there had scholarship at least for part of the whole cost of it. So it wasn't uh, a real impossibility to go, especially for women. And that was the exciting part. I thought that women got a chance to really be serious about this kind of work. Um, the interchange was, there was no structure in the sense that there was nothing taught. People went there who were quite advanced in their work and they were chosen by, by submitting slides and, and we adjudicated and picked the ones that seemed to be the right ones. And then the idea was that people would exchange ideas amongst themselves in the studio. But beyond that, uh, the BAM Center, everything was open to them. All the lectures, all the visiting artists, whether it was in theater, whether it was in music, whether it was in photography or ceramics, it doesn't matter where. And so there was a lot of, interchange or exchange or, co or even collaboration. Some people actually work together with, with musicians or with somebody from theater. So it was, uh, it was a bit of a pressure cooker, but not because of pressure they put on, it's pressure you put on yourself. It was six weeks of unbelievable possibility. And to use that, you just stayed up all night. <laughs> Why not? Why not? Why not? Um, now, this work, Interchange 2, 1979, that kind of became an important work for you. Um, can you just talk a bit about that? It was very, very important. It was, in a sense, the turning point. Mildred Constantine, who uh, was a curator at the Museum of Modern Art in New York, et cetera, et cetera, uh, very important lady in fiber. She and, and Jacqueline Larson put together a book called the art fabric mainstream. The idea of mainstream for her was that it was time that uh, fiber was recognized in the larger art world and in the mainstream. And uh, so this piece was one I was working on. Apart, I didn't know about the book when I was working on it. I was doing it in my session at the interchange. It was the first interchange that I was part of. And uh, I wove the strips on the looms because there were plenty of looms in, in Banff. And then I figured out the, color, the colors, the shadings and, and made the, the background in wool and felted the whole thing together. And this was the result where it crinkled like that and attached its, the strips attached themselves. Well, Mildred Constantine and Matt, I don't know, she should know because she really had an overview of what was being done she thought that I had possibly invented that kind of technique. And she liked the piece anyway and decided that it had to go in her book. And that was, that was just amazing because the show then opened at the Museum of Modern Art in San Francisco and for years afterwards traveled throughout the United States. It must've gone to at least a dozen museums. So it was now it's quite beginning. a large work as well too. It's, it's large enough, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, and you, um, what you did here is you um, integrated weaving and felting together. And I think, is that what really interested Mildred? Well, she found that unusual. So okay. I, I believed her. <laughs> All right. Okay. Now uh, let's look at um, a later work. Um, here you are in front, uh, Chrysalis II, 1983, displayed at the Walter Phillips Gallery in Banff. What, what can you tell us about this? It looks like you're into full-on felting at that point. At that point, mostly yes. Although the other thing that happened, and there are pieces I haven't shown, but they're in, which again, Banff fostered in a way. You could try any technique, you could try any material, you in fact had people willing to help you from other departments like the, the people who worked in, in, on the grounds, they did some metal work for us if we wanted frames made in metal or, or parts of, of our work for some people who worked in metal or wood or whatever. You could try anything you wanted to. Uh, and I've worked in, in leather, I've worked a bit in metal, I've 
certainly have also continued some of the weaving and knitted and on and on and on. The, the felting for me, this kind of felting, and that was, um, it was ex exhibited in a show at the Bow Centre at the Walter Phillips. It was a two person show with Anne Flayton Pixley. She is the paper maker. She had the other half of the gallery and I had this one. My work then ended up being an installation, not individual pieces, wall pieces. And so for me, the felt for this, for what I was trying to express has this amazing ability. You think it's so fragile, the way it looks fragile there. It looks like film, like little things you could pull apart easily, like a baby's cradle, although baby there's in not intended baby. It's a full-size person. And, uh, and on the other hand, it's quite strong. I mean, if you think of the yurts and things that people make in the um, Middle East for their, or the further north of the Middle East where they have yurts for their, their housing, I mean, it's quite, quite, quite strong. And all over Russia, people make their boots out of felt. And so it's a bit like ourselves. We can be really fragile, but also in an unexpected way, and sometimes have to be strong. Okay, all right. Um, you had a strong interest in the figure, um, which we can sort of see mm -hmm. um, behind you in that uh, felted um, piece. Let's look at what you're doing here with the figure. Um, memory fragments, um, that was started at Bath too as well, 1983 to 90. That's right. I continued those right through the time when I was in, in Montreal uh, at Concordia and um, showed them in Brazil and showed them. Uh, they ended up in Latvia and that's at the museum in, in a place called Madonna, which is where I was born. And the odd thing was when I went to the museum, they, they invited me to go there for the, and put in the show. The show, by the way, has uh, and the, the wall pieces are by my sister and my mother, who are both artists as well, uh, but they don't do fiber. Anyway, when I went to the museum, one of the buildings, the older building, has been turned into, into their offices, but it used to be a hospital. And they took me to an office and said, you were born here, right in this room. <laughs> and so that was amazing. However, yeah. the other interesting thing, which is a Canadian connection, these pieces, they were willing to show them, but I had to get them over there. And I didn't know how. And then by total accident, and by, by, by luck and by golly, we ended up, the ambassador to Canada from Latvia was returning to Latvia because a new ambassador was coming in his place. So he had paid by governments, big containers to take all his furniture and whatever he was taking home. And there was enough room for five big boxes of my work that went to Latvia. And luckily I didn't have to worry about shipping them back because the museum has kept the work. All right. So it sounds like the BAMP Center really kind of widened your world and it widened the world of many other uh, women who were there as well too. Is that the thing that you take away with oh, the most? Ab absolutely. It changed my life completely. I mean, I, I was a trained language and literature teacher I started off teaching at the University of Sydney in French. Uh, eventually I've taught in Germany and, and in other parts of Canada. I've taught French, I've taught German, I've taught English. I, I abandoned all of that and ended up with this. I've done a lot of teaching in the weaving and fiber area, but it is a complete shift. The only thing that perhaps links back to that origin is what I did introduce in Banff was uh, the Critical Eye course, which was the idea was to bring together not producers of fiber or weaving or art, but the critics who write about it. They are often the same person, but that doesn't matter. So um, I felt that in the same way that, that Connie, that's Mildred Constantine, had, had wanted to establish fiber in the mainstream of art, I thought that uh, a corollary of that would be the writing about it that would help it there as well and needed to be taken seriously and thought about seriously. I mean, when a paint, painter, painting critic talks about brush strokes, 
they sound as if they know what brush strokes and things are. When a critic who has no concept of fiber or how any of that is done, doesn't always manage to talk in the same kind of way. I don't mean just technique, but about what, what's possible, what the intention is and what's, what, what it brings to the art world that might be different from painting or might be also lots of it is similar. And so I thought that it would be interesting to have people work together, just trying to look at it really as art. And uh, the two, two summers we had sessions and they, people were quite, quite happy with that. And they all wrote some stuff and thought it was a, a needed whole. So that linked back to my literature and books and writing and all those things. I don't really write, but I read a lot. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you. Um, thank you very much, um, Inez Burstens, for uh, telling us about the critical eye and about those very, very important years in your life. It's, it made you into an artist. Thank you. I don't know if that's good or not. It makes you poor. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Thank <laughs> you.